Yeah, and I told you that I'm going to start back here. Yep. And follow me up halfway. Of course. Do you want the cast to straight in? Or turn straight in. Straight in. He yeah. thought it straight in. Straight in. We talked nope. about that.
Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our brother Scott, to give thanks for his life, to commend him to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter, comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, by glory and honor, forever and ever. Amen. Let us begin our worship with our processional hymn.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Scott. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that as we live in confidence and hope until, by your call, we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us now read responsibly the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still water. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, go walk to the valley of the shadow of death. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. You may be seated. A reading from the Psalms. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult, there is a river whose streams may glad the city of God the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come and behold the works of the Lord. See what con desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, not anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Please stand if you are able. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Not too long ago, I got a phone call. It was from a man I've gotten to know. His offices are two doors down. He had the family there, and I was told of what had happened to Scott. We made plans to get together, and we did. You got a phone call, you got a text, you read it in the paper, you heard the news, and it was hard. Wendy read to us a section of St. Paul's letter to the church in Rome. What we know about that now is that St. Paul had not yet been to Rome. He had started most of the churches in the Eastern Mediterranean, but the church in Rome had been started by others. And, and he also knew, probably through communication of a letter similar to this one, that uh, things were really tough for these Roman Christians. As you might know, it was against the law to be a follower of Jesus at that time. You had to believe in those Roman gods some of you might have learned about in school. And so therefore, if you did, and most of the time they would try to hide, though they wanted to outreach with the good news, they were imprisoned. Some were killed for their faith. And we'll know later that Paul will end up with the same result when he is arrested in Rome later. And we can assume what that letter was. It's a letter you might want to write right now to someone you think might have the answer. What is happening? We had accepted our Lord and Savior. We are waiting for his return. We are baptized in his name. Yes, we have received the gift of the resurrection, but it's hard to figure out what that is. What do we say to these things, says Paul back? What do we say to these things? What we say is if God is for us, nobody is against us. He who gave his life for us will surely give us all things. We, of course, live in a time in which um, it's even hard to reach out to those we care about and love during this pandemic. 
It's been weird for me. I'm the interim pastor of this place, and I still have yet to meet face-to-face -face any of its members. And hopefully you've learned through this time how important love is, how important family is, how important it is to be able to gather. We here in this parish look forward to that time. By the way, you are the first group that's come in for a funeral in this sanctuary since the pandemic. So be safe. We pray that as we go forward, these occasions will be again given to us. And may you learn the gift of life. May you learn to treasure the love you have within the family. May you comfort those who mourn. May you be thankful for God's love for you. May you gather, maybe even in other sanctuaries, so that you can be reminded every day you are loved and you are forgiven and God's peace is with you. Now, Scott, we know that Scott um, left us so very quickly, and we know that uh, we have to go forward uh, without him. And we know that grief is a very difficult thing. Our present president talks well of it, you know. He talks of the experience of having something taken out of your heart. He talks of those times when, after some time goes by, you can remember and share those memories one to another. To do so um, this morning, I asked the family to organize something for me. I gave them work to do, particular, one person in particular to see if there's anybody that wanted to remember Scott in front of you. And you know, that's hard to do. That's hard to do. But we're going to spend some time with those who have volunteered. Support them as they do it. It's important. Now, Glenn, cousin Glenn, is going to come up first. Glenn, if you could come up first. Uh, go to the lectern over here and share. You can do that right now. Cousin Greg. Scott was my best friend growing up. It was a good life I led as a kid, and he was a huge part of it. As luck would have it, I grew up right around the corner from my cousin. Summer times, we spent all our times together, either at my house or at his house, 22 Burldale Ave, doing the usual things kids do, try to fry ants with a magnifying glass in the name of science, or just hanging around the neighborhood. Kind of funny as I reflect back on our times together, some of the adventures still bring a warm smile to my face. I sung with Scott when he still had the cowboy wallpaper in his room, a sore subject years later when he outgrew it and Uncle Dick was in no rush to replace it. Even worse, when he moved out and they turned his room into a den. The original tenant never quite got over that one. Scott had a cool metal pedal car we used to play with when we were kids. And he had helmets he gave us. His, an authentic army helmet. Mine, a bright white civil defense helmet with no liner. Not so cool, not so comfortable. Usually, he was a pretty good sharer. For some reason, he never gave up that army helmet. Probably for my safety, I'm sure. We both had paper routes. Can't say we delivered the news on time, but we had fun. A reoccurring theme, we always had fun.
One summer, we saved our earnings for new bikes. We visited the bike shop often to check out our future purchases. When we each had our $112, we bought our Sam, Ka Sam Kazanabe 10 speeds. His was white, mine was yellow, and the world was ours. We started our landscaping business together when we agreed to do Mrs. Cole's leaves for 85 cents an hour. It was miserable work. She gave us this little sheet, we dragged leaves into the woods. We didn't have fun. Wasn't looking forward to day two. I called my buddy after school and said, hey, let's hit it, time to go finish up. Apparently, he developed a leaf allergy overnight. <laughs> Couldn't continue. I was on my own. I asked for a doctor's note, but never got it. That was the year he bought a state-of-the-art orange backpacking tent. We planned our big camping excursion for my backyard. Everything was good till the next morning when we realized you got to crack a window in a tent like that or you wake up in a tropical rainforest. When they were working on the high school in the neighborhood in my backyard, they made the mistake of leaving the keys and some huge piece of equipment. Not only did Scott get it going, but he moved a thing 20 feet. All's well that ends well. Scott had himself some fun part-time jobs he liked to talk about. Tops on his list was working at the Pike Drive-In. And go figure, selling women's shoes at Edison, New Jersey when he went to Drew. Scott once sold me a raffle ticket for Club 48. I says, so when's the drawing? His response, yesterday. You lost. <laughs> Scott was an early adapter for a lot of things. He was the first guy I knew that learned DOS. Other things, not so much. His car had to be a standard or he wouldn't buy it. And he never did trade in that charcoal grill for the gas model. Not being a morning person, Scott painted his bathroom wall at Allen Street the darkest green you've ever seen. First time I saw it, I said, what up with that? He explained to me mornings were hard enough. He didn't need bright colors to get in his way. As luck would have it, Scott and I both lived in my grandmother's old two-family house in, at the same time. First it was just us and Jake the Wonder Dog. Then Deb and Wendy moved in, and the good times continued as our families grew. We were each in each other's weddings. Scott and Deb are my son Michael's godparents, and Wendy and I are honored to be Kirsten's godparents. Then came Andrew and Jacob. Enjoyed some of the same adventures we did. They did step it up a notch, though. We never had potato cannons. If you put all your happy memories in a box, Scott takes up a huge part of my box. I'll always love him and carry him in my heart forever. Don't worry, buddy. I won't let anybody wear your army helmet. Now we invite up uh, Scott's friend, Tom Kugno, this time. First of all, I want to thank the family for giving me the opportunity to say a couple words. Um, I will keep it short. There's far too many stories. Uh, far too hard to pick them out as to which ones to, to share. Um, I've known Scott since first grade. Started to hang out with him extensively in high school and uh, had far too many laughs. Um, I would like to just let everybody know or remind people who already know that we both starred in uh, sixth grade Littlest Angel play, which uh, to this day critics call probably the greatest uh, elementary school production in history. Um, spent a lot of times after college hanging out at Willard Pond, uh, having some beers and talking about life. I'm uh, pretty sure that's why they barricaded off uh, Willard Pond. Don't let any cars back there now. I think we had a big piece of that. Played a lot of flag football with him and had to listen to him root for his Giants, much to uh, my disdain. Um, 
Oddly, he infuriated me and my buddy Danny Marsh every week picking the Chicago Bears in our three-team parlay. Uh, I don't even think he liked the Bears, so I'm not sure what that was about. Uh, it was the best set. He honor of being his best man at his wedding. Took that very seriously to this day. And I thank you for that. Excuse me. So the one story I'm going to share with you quickly that kind of encapsulates was one of our favorite stories is uh, probably back around 85. Scott and I went to a stag party on a Friday night. He had cashed a commission check for about $1,700. I had cashed my tax return for about $900, all cash, all in our pockets. And about 10.30, we decided to leave the stag party and take a ride down to New York City. That's where the problem started. Um, we got down to New York City and got into the city on the Henry Hudson. Scott was riding in his Toyota Silica, which is a nasty car back then, and uh, one of his pride and joys. So we were well on our way about 1230 when uh, in the middle of the Henry Hudson, the, all the electrical systems in the car shut down, lights, power, everything. We crawled over to the side of the road and um, started about a 24-hour adventure um, instead of just getting a room like smart people we decided we'd stay up through the night and trip the light fantastic in the city so um, it was probably about six o'clock the following day that uh, we picked up his car drove back home with about probably sixty dollars in our pocket between the two of us and uh, his silica lived after that so I, I just want to say my sincerest condolences from my wife Peggy and I, uh, to the family, to Deb, Kirsten, Jacob, <clears throat> Wendy, Karen, um, and the extended patch out family, extended family, and to my boy, <clears throat> Scott, Scott had a lot of layers, some were easy to read, some were He always had a lot of dreamer in him. And I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping he's just dreaming happy dreams now. I love you, buddy. Press the peace. Thank you, Thomas. This time, we're going to ask for um, Scott's two kids to come forward. Jacob and Kirsten. First of all, thank you all for being here with us today. I'd like to read a letter to my dad. I want to say nothing could prepare me for this, but that wouldn't be exactly right. Through your example, you taught me how to be a good man. You taught me the importance of being the best man I can be, not only when times are good, but more importantly when times are tough. You taught me to be selfless and be the man my loved ones need me to be. And you showed me how to find a sense of pride and purpose in being that man. So in a way, you've been preparing me for this my whole life. You were a loving provider in every sense of the word. You provided for your family. You provided for the community with jobs and opportunities so that others could provide for their loved ones. And even now, your wisdom provides light through this darkness. When it feels like there's no answers, look for the lessons. I love you, Dad. Thank you all for being with us here today. My dad was a superhero to us. And I can see from all the faces here today that he meant a lot to you as well. Gosh, where to start? <laughs> I could sit here and list off a million things about my dad. The way he screamed at the TV in the kitchen every football Sunday. The way he always seemed to be laughing at everything with that deep belly laugh, especially when he was mocking my mom. 
how he made me fall in love with hiking and sparked my love of black and white films. But let's talk about one of my first most vivid memories, which is him teaching me how to say my prayers. Every night he'd come into my room and sit on my bed. We'd fold our hands and we'd bless every family member and friend that we had. My dad always took the time to answer my questions and explain what every line of our prayers meant in a way that even a five-year-old could understand. He was a great teacher like that. My dad taught my brother and I all kinds of things, how to ride a bike without training wheels, how to make potato pancakes and pasta from scratch, how to be perpetually late to everything, <laughs> and how to insert a joke into any sad or awkward moment. My dad also taught us the hard stuff, like how to heal a broken heart with your family, how to forgive when you've been wronged, and how to show acts of kindness to a stranger and make their day. One of my most favorite memories of my dad is a time where he taught Jacob and I how important those random acts of kindness were. You see, the four of us were all on vacation in Vermont, eating dinner at one of our favorite restaurants. We'd been to this restaurant year after year and had always cherished listening to their pianist play. Jacob especially loved going to this restaurant because this particular pianist was very patient and took all of his requests. So one night as we're leaving, my dad asked Jacob to hand this sweet old man a $100 bill. The pianist was so shocked and grateful, he started to cry. And while my dad wouldn't admit this even now, he started to cry too. You see, this is just one of the many times that my dad showed Jacob and I the kind of person that he was and the kind of person that he wanted us to be. He took such pride in giving us those lessons. My dad loved his family deeply. He loved being a father, loved being a husband, and he always went out of his way to take care of Jacob, my mother, and I to guide us. And even now, Despite his sudden death, we have been blessed to see the ways that he continues to guide us, to take care of us, and help us navigate this new world without his physical presence. We see you, Dad. We love you, Dad. And every person here will carry you with them for each day to come. Thank you. Finally, Suzanne sister has been asked to speak as well, so Suzanne. Those are hard to follow. <laughs> um, I met Scott when he was going to marry my sister many, many, many moons ago. He was soon part of our family, and he quickly grew on us. He always had a funny or interesting story to share, a witty comment, or some bit of knowledgeable information you didn't know that you needed to know. When his family moved to Moodis, I do admit that sometimes the drive was well long and very annoying, especially when it was raining or snowing or the drawbridge was open. But when you finally did make it to that driveway, up that long driveway, <laughs> You were really glad you were there, because there was always laughter in the kitchen and Avery's soda on the sun porch. Scott was a pretty good cook, and only charcoal grilling would do. However, I think he was an even better husband and dad. Family traditions, activities, and vacations filled their calendar. Scott had kind eyes, a good gentle heart, and a knack for remembering people. And he treated people, everyone the same, everyone the same and you always felt comfortable in his presence. Whatever the occasion, Scott just seemed to enjoy life. He was lighthearted and good-natured. I remember a year when we were exchanging gifts after Christmas. Scott had this puzzled and discombobulated look on his face when he opened what was a plastic bag with some marshmallows inside. An accompanying poem explained that that year he was getting snowman poop. Well, he just chuckled at the jovial banter and graciously accepted his gift with a smile. In fact, for your information, he did get a gift that year, but I don't even remember what it was. 
It was just great to have someone to kid and joke around with, and that's how I'm always gonna remember Scott. Lord, we thank you for Scott. I found this quote that I want to share as I wrap up. What you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. Kirsten, you have your dad's eyes and his smile. Jacob, you have his heart and his laughter. He lives on in the both of you and in all of our lives which he has touched. We love you, Scott. We're sure going to miss you, and you'll always be in our hearts. Just a final few words. One thing, because I always forget something. When uh, we gathered uh, to plan this service, um, I went to the office and I had heard that um, uh, Scott's dad had died some eight years before. Very faithful member here at First Lutheran Church. I had the office manager pull it up, and uh, so I had what had been planned by the family for their dad uh, and grandfather. So you are going through the spirit of those we also remember who have gone before. You know, whenever we come to this point, we go like, yes, memory is great, and may all these memories be blessed. You know? That's what you got to cling to and hold on to. That's what keeps him alive in your heart. But we also know, what can we say to these things? There are many, many rooms reunited with those who have gone before. It's a beautiful thing. It's a wonderment thing. But let us pray that Scott is at peace and Scott has received uh, that eternal gift and could be with his dad. Interesting concept, isn't it? Now, another reason I say that is we, we used his service, and so when I was going through it this, this uh, today, just going making sure I was going to make everything okay, you get to the commendation, and it says, let us commend Richard to God's mercy. And we're going to commend Scott to his mercy, and I think I might include Richard again, just, just because I think that's good. May your... Uh, memory of Scott be blessed. Like I said, may you hear again the good news of the gospel that takes a while to be comforted by as you go through your time of loss, but may you cling to it as well. God loves you. God, his son died for you. You are forgiven. You are blessed. Amen. Now uh, you may stand if you are able, I believe, for the hymn of the day.
whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God and holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized in Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, Give courage and faith to all who mourn and assure in certain hope in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage, who walk as yet by faith, that where this world groans in grief and pain, your spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy, help us in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of life everlasting. God of mercy, God of all grace, we give thanks because of his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And hear us as we pray that prayer your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. One final comment. Uh, as we have remembered Richard as well, I shared just with you. Uh, the pastor of that service is right here, Pastor Will Baumgartner. He is with us, um, who helped plan this service for us. And here we are again, sadly. Let us commend both Richard and Scott to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Scott. Knowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming, receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Ensure in certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our brother Scott, and we commit his body to its resting place, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless him and keep him. 
The Lord's face shine on him with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon him with favor and give him peace. Amen. Rest eternal, grant him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. O Lord, support us all the day long of this troubled life until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed. The fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy grant us safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good, so that you may do God's will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in God's sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his counts upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. Thou my heaven.